This is Romania's oldest holiday resort, Baile Herculane, or the Herculane Baths, nestled in the picturesque Cerna Valley in the southwestern part of the country. With its first recorded documents dating back to 153 AD, it's a place steeped in nearly two millennia of history. Once a thriving destination, renowned for its therapeutic hot springs, grand architecture and visits from European aristocracy, the Herculane Bats today remain an echo of their opulent past, offering glimpses of their former glory while promising a hopeful future. In today's video, I'll take you through the rich history and present-day charm of this historic place, exploring what remains of its grandeur and discovering what it looks like today. Good morning from Baile Herculane, which is the oldest holiday resort in Romania. I'm on a trip with my mom. We wanted to go on a short weekend trip. And as we were thinking about destinations, we realized that we both haven't been here in a very, very long time. I think for me, it's been 18 years. So we thought it would be interesting to come back here and see if anything changed, if things are the way we remember. One thing definitely hasn't changed, and that is the absolutely stunning scenery. We're only here for two days, and it seems like today is going to be raining. So the plan is to go for a beautiful hike now in the morning before it starts raining. And in the afternoon, we'll probably spend the time in the thermal pools downstairs, which is the main reason people come here. And I'll tell you more about this resort in this video. Let me give you a quick room tour. This is the room. It's pretty basic to be honest, but the view is the most important thing. This is the bathroom. And then here we got some robes for the pool. And this is the room. Small lounge area. The bed. But the most important thing is this. Our balcony and just look at that. And this is the way back. I specifically chose this hotel for that view and not for what it offers. And it's beautiful, it is stunning. And this whole balcony, just, just sitting here and having a coffee, looking at that. Really happy with it. Okay, so we just left our hotel. So now we're going for a very easy uh, hiking trail. We got a 25 minute walk to where the trail starts and then the trail should be half an hour to a really nice scenic viewpoint. And look at this view. This is such a beautiful place. Nature is amazing. We're still on our way to the start of the trail. This doesn't seem pedestrian friendly at all. We seem like the only people going for this hike. It makes sense to be able to walk all the way to the start of the trail. But then yeah, there's no sidewalk <laughs> okay so we found this this is where we're going the white cross and it's supposed to be 350 meters yay okay this is where it starts so we start it is quite muddy and slippery The trail so far is really really well marked there are multiple trails so 
oh, we're doing the shortest trail to the White Cross. Then you can also uh, hike towards the highest peak. There's also a trail leading to a cave. And another one going to a um, stream. Since I'm with my mom, I'm not venturing <laughs> to do any crazy long trail. But I thought it would be nice to go to the cross and admire the resort and the town from up on the mountain. So that's the plan. So far the trail has been just this forest walk that you can see and nothing else. There are also a few benches on the way for people who want to get some rest. Like this one. And it's not too difficult but there is some elevation to it so it's also not too easy. <laughs> Towards the end, it's a bit more difficult. So we'll see how we're doing when coming back. I'm a bit stressed for my mom because uh, I guess she's not exactly a hiking person, but hopefully not too long. Yay! We arrived at this viewpoint. Okay, so here is the old bridge, which is somewhere here around the corner. And here, like a five minute, probably more difficult hike, we got the cross. So let's see. This is absolutely stunning. I'm so happy we came here. This is the trail towards the cross, I think. I think you need to hold those chains. And uh, it does not look great. This is it. I'm going along without my mom. Uh, you can see why. And uh, we're gonna meet back here. Should be five minutes, three minutes. I don't know, the cross. The cross is right here somewhere at the top but she's not that well equipped and uh yeah i'm going on man
almost there. That's where I came from. <sighs> and this is it. Yay. I made it. Beautiful. This is a national park. I probably didn't mention in the video. And yeah, the view from um, the bridge was actually better than the view here at the cross. And the trails keep going up. But because I'm with my mom, I'm not gonna go further. I just decided to come here to see the cross. But I feel bad that I left her behind. So we're going back. It was a lovely hike. One of these hikes that you can see here is way longer. It's like five, six hours into the national park, which I'm sure is absolutely lovely with beautiful scenery. And this town, Baile Herculane, was built across the river. So this, this river is called Cherna, and this is Cherna Valley. And from here you can see the beautiful valley. It was definitely worth it, beautiful views. That bridge was really, really impressive, to be honest. I'm one of those people who actually love heights. I'm not scared of heights uh, for some reason. And uh, I always loved from rooftops to high peaks, anything at a high altitude with a view is for me. So yeah, time to go back. Okay, so this is the most difficult part. Basically, you got these chains and these are quite high. But other than that, the trail was easy. So that's nice. And the views, the views from up here. Beautiful! You know what's really funny? That my mom is not dressed appropriately for a hike. And uh, we kept saying, you know, if we meet someone, they're gonna start laughing at us because it's a little bit embarrassing to carry a purse on a hike. And um, we came across a couple and they had the exact same issue and the exact same conversation. They didn't plan on, on hiking this trail. And we met and we started laughing at each other because we were somehow in the exact same situation, feeling embarrassed, but not alone. Next stop is called Hercules statue. And um, there should be a nice square as well. I don't know if this is the center of the town or not. It's a very long town um, spread along the river's valley. I don't actually remember anything uh, where the center is, any details. I came here 18 years ago and I remember nothing. These hotels that were built during communism remind me so much of my childhood <laughs> i didn't actually grow up in communism but back in the 90s post-communist romania was still pretty similar um, in terms of hotels places to visit it wasn't that much of a sudden change for those who don't know uh, romania was a communist country uh, before uh, 1989 I was born in 1990. So I did grow up in the transition, let's say. So many places are just left to collapse, which is shocking to me, honestly. There are also multiple houses like this. Just looking around, it seems like this was such a beautiful place. You can see, first of all, how beautiful it used to be, and you can also see the potential. <laughs> and yeah, I'm really hoping something will change and someone is going to do something. So I'm really hoping there are some projects in place. I'll do a little bit more reading about it and let you know if I find something. But yeah, it's a bit sad. Seeing buildings like this, absolutely breaks my heart because this used to be a beautiful place and nobody just does anything about it so much potential and many places in Romania actually have so much potential 
such a beautiful country and it's such a shame that not much is being done to save places like these and it feels like they got stuck in the 70s, 80s. The origins of the Herkunane Baths date back to the Roman period during Emperor Trajan's rule after the conquest of Dacia. Renowned for their appreciation of thermal baths, the Romans recognized the therapeutic properties of the natural hot springs here. They constructed impressive baths and named the site after Hercules, based on the legend that he stopped there to bathe and rest. A walk through the town is like stepping back in time with buildings steeped in history, constructed in a charming Austrian Baroque style. Under a successive Hungarian, Ottoman and Austro-Hungarian rule, the Herkulane Baths experienced unprecedented development in the 19th century. Beyond its primary purpose as a medical treatment center, it also became a cultural and leisure establishment. The resort attracted European aristocracy, including Emperor Franz Joseph and Empress Elizabeth of Austria, who owned a property in the town. Franz Joseph once declared that the Herkulane Baths were the most beautiful resort on the continent. The golden era continued into the 1980s during Romania's communist period. If in 1968 the resort welcomed around 33,000 tourists, by 1980 it hosted an impressive 976,000 tourists, highlighting its growing popularity as one of the country's top four holiday destinations, alongside the Black Sea coast, Poiana Brasov and Boile Felix. Between 1965 and 1985, the accommodation capacity expanded spectacularly from 1,000 to 5,000 beds. However, the fall of communism in 1989 marked the beginning of a challenging chapter. Many state-owned properties were privatized, leading to mismanagement and neglect. Once grand hotels and spa facilities fell into disrepair, and the majestic buildings that symbolized its opulence became haunting reminders of a bygone era. Today, the Herculane Baths stand as a living reminder of spa heritage in decline. Much of the balneal climatic equipment is closed, access to thermal resources has been limited and the place feels frozen in time. The bustling crowds have vanished, leaving space for your imagination to picture its former glory. Nevertheless, the town is beginning to show signs of revival, with ongoing infrastructure investments and efforts to refurbish its historic hotels. These are the Neptune Baths, the grand architectural jewel of the resort, constructed between 1883 and 1886 under the Austro-Hungarian Empire. They are part of the comprehensive infrastructure designed to cater to the health and leisure needs of the European elite. This elegant establishment featured opulent interiors with intricate mosaics and lavish decorations, offering guests therapeutic treatments using the natural thermal waters. Today, the Neptune Baths stand as a symbol of the resort's golden era, having endured neglect and decline following Romania's political changes. Restoration efforts are underway to return the baths to their former glory, and I will link the project and more information in the description of this video. Here, for example, it is renovated and it seems like they are doing something. And this building here as well seems like it's going to be properly redone. Yeah, it seems like there is hope. So we stopped in the central square to have a lemonade. This is the view. It's pretty much the only place where you can sit and have a drink here. And we'll go explore the square that's right next to us afterwards. The weather is absolutely perfect. It's not raining as it's supposed to. So that's good. And um, yeah, so far it's a lovely day. A few moments later. And it's raining. Well, the scheduled rain is here. Thankfully, we're not on a hike. <laughs> Some buildings here in the central square are being renovated, which gives me hope. And uh, yeah, the word that comes to mind when I'm thinking about this place is potential. And now we're going to visit the Apollo Baths, which is a museum. And uh, I'll find out more when we get there. Similar to the Neptune Baths, the Apollo Baths are another distinguished feature of the Herculane complex. The Apollo Spring, constructed by the Romans, reaches a depth of 30 meters and served as the primary water source for the baths. 
when the spring's capacity was insufficient, an aqueduct built by the Romans connected it to a nearby cave. Also known as the Royal or Imperial Baths, these were a favored destination for Roman emperors, the aristocracy from the Austro-Hungarian Empire era, the Romanian royal family and prominent figures of their time seeking therapeutic treatments. started walking back to our hotel and I can see that there are um, a few trails here. Very interesting. I really wish uh, we stayed longer and I could do more trails here. Maybe I'll come back, but for now we're going back to our accommodation. Mainly because it's raining and um, according to the weather forecast, it's supposed to be raining all the way through the night. We're gonna enjoy the thermal pools. I hope we can. And um, have a nice lunch dinner, a late lunch, and uh, yeah, I would love to do all these trails, honestly. And this is the building I was um, showing you earlier from the other side of the river, and it also says that there's a chance uh, things will collapse. And again, it's just shocking to me that this building is collapsing. started raining pretty heavily now so we're gonna hurry back this is a whole abandoned hotel that was probably built during communism this is called um, Hotel Hercules and these used to be places where everyone was coming on holiday and like Look how beautiful this place is, look how beautiful this hotel used to be. Um, and it's just all left to collapse. I actually thought these hotels were still functional uh, until I went by them and I saw this and it was really, really sad. And if you look across the river, again, other buildings just left to collapse. And there are many new builds as well, where people bought land and they invested. I honestly don't have that much information on how these things work, but all I can say is that it is very, very sad. And just looking at these buildings and knowing that in uh, 1979 this was one of the most popular tourist destinations in Romania with 900,000 
tourists <laughs> per year. I can only imagine how lively and beautiful this was during summer and all these hotels were functional and people were happily enjoying nature and I'm just thinking how many memories people made in these places people used to come to these hotels every summer enjoying their holidays and now they just don't exist anymore and I keep thinking about it and I obviously haven't been here back in the day but it makes me really sad and nostalgic just got back and it is raining really heavily so yeah it's probably going to keep raining all day I'm really happy it was sunny during our hike and we we got to see the beautiful views from up there and uh, now we're just going to relax we're going to enjoy the pool and have a relaxing afternoon honestly just this balcony is good enough for me not a bad spot We are ready for the pool. This is our funny way <laughs> to the pool. Mmm, luxurious. Yay! We made it. Maybe that one is actually hot. I think so. So I think these pools are not actual thermal water, and I think that's the thermal water. Oh, yes, 100%. The warm water. Oh, this is very warm. Okay. Okay, I'm not actually going back to the hot pool because there's so many people there. It's not that cold outside. I think it's maybe 15 degrees, so it's not that bad. Anyway, back to our room <laughs> now back on our way to our room there is a tractor and this is it for today it's almost um, 8 p.m. we're now back in our room um, relaxing on the balcony so I'm gonna close this video here thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one